Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Mark chapter 13, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Mark chapter 13. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, look at these magnificent buildings. Look at the impressive stones in the walls. Jesus replied, Yes, look at these great buildings, but they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives across the valley from the temple. Peter, J Peter, James, John, and Andrew came to him privately and asked him, Tell us when will all this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to be fulfilled? Jesus replied, Don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many parts of the world, as well as famines. But this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. When the, these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local councils and beaten in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. For the good news must, be first, must first be preached to all nations. But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at that time, for it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. A brother will betray his brother to death, a father will betray his own child, and, a, and children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The day is coming when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where he should not be. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for a pregnant woman and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in winter. For there will be a great anguish in those days than at any time since God created the world. And it will never be so great again. In fact, unless the Lord shortens that time of calamity, not a single person will survive. But for the sake of his chosen, his chosen ones, he has shortened those days. Then if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Watch out. I have warned you about this ahead of time. At that time, after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory, and he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world and from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that this return is very near, right at the door. I'll tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. 
Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard, stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return. In the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak, don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone, watch for him. Amen. So what did you think of Mark chapter 13? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed, if you've been blessed lately, make sure you're letting us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so um, this is a very... Um, okay, so this is a very <laughs> interesting um, section of the Bible where he speaks about the future. Um, and... You know, I hesitate to talk about this, you know, the end is near and, you know, Jesus is coming um, because it says don't let anyone mislead you. And, you know, I underline that to be sure because um, I think that it's very important that we live like Jesus is coming in the next second. So in the next moment. So don't wait until I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till I lay down to pray until I lay down to go to sleep to pray about that or to, you know, ask for forgiveness for that. We need to be immediately asking for forgiveness whenever, you know, we realize that we have sinned, whenever we have offended somebody. Um, we need to be asking for those things right away. Um, don't wait till you sit down. Oh, I only pray when I eat. So I'm going to right before I eat. So I'm going to say my prayer that no pray all ceaselessly throughout the day you know continuously throughout the day pray um you know these are the things that we need to be doing it's like oh i'll give that up tomorrow no give it up right now as soon as you think to say i'm going to give that up later that's when you know you need to give it up now um i'm going to start my diet on monday you know no start it today start it right now because you're thinking about it so god has put it on your heart and your mind so we need to go ahead and act now um so I don't want to talk about like, you know, the signs of the times, because I feel like those signs are always going to be in existence. Um, because as it, you know, it says at the end, um, no one will know the day or the hour when these things will happen. And I think that's why there's constantly earthquakes, nation against nation, there's constantly wars, there's constantly things, but God specifically says, don't panic. So continue to live your life, but just stay alert, be on guard, because you never know when God is coming. So we don't want to leave things unresolved. We want to make sure that we have forgiven everyone that we need to forgive. So as soon as you are offended, um, consult with God about softening your heart to forgive that person. You know, offer that up to God immediately. Um, it, it's just something that we need to be constantly aware of. We can't wait till later, tomorrow, next week. Oh, when I see that person, call them now. You know, um, don't wait. Um, because we, you never know when God's coming. Um, and I also, um, you know, further down below, it's when um, it says, we will all be on trial. Um, so for the good news must first be preached to all the nations. But when you are arrested and stand for trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you to at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. So don't worry about what to say when you are um, accosted for your faith, when you are belittled for your faith, when you are bullied for your faith, um, you know, not just arrested, but put into a box, put into a prison. Like, I feel like people um, who are not believers put believers into a box into a prison of their of their own um, and to try to keep them in this little space um, but God set us free we don't have to live in that prison and through the Holy Spirit we can speak to these people and God will give us the right things to say to them and I said God um, give me the endurance like Jesus don't let me grow weary renew my spirit daily so I underlined the part says the one who endures to the end will be saved so you know a lot of times throughout each of our lives, you know, life can get hard, but don't give up on God. We can 
tell God we want to give up. Like Jesus said it at the, you know, on the cross, he said, why have you forsaken me? You know, and he was way stronger than we will ever be. You know, I don't feel like I would ever be as strong as him to sit on that cross and say, God, forgive these people for they know not what they do. Um, but that is what I look for. And I, I ask God for all the time, you know, God, help me to have that heart to say that. Even when I can't say it in that moment or feel like I really, that's how I really feel. I say, I know this is how I'm supposed to feel, God. God, so give me this, you know, give me this feeling. So I'm just going to say it until I feel it, um, until you soften my, until my heart is softened enough so that I can feel it too. Um, so, you know, that that's just what we need to do and just keep asking God to give us that strength to endure to the end because we never know when that end may come. Um, it may be tomorrow. It may be in the next second. It may be while you're watching this video. It may be after you've passed away. Um, we never know. Um, so just endure to your time has come to an end, you know, and that's when you know you'll be saved. Um, so it says the day is coming and when you will see, you'll see it. The day is coming. Um, so just know that it's coming. Um, and I wrote off to the side over here. It just says live like Jesus is coming soon. Um, be on guard, stay alert. So a lot of people, again, just live in that grace, like to say, well, you know, Jesus saved me, so I don't really have to do anything. I can sin all I want. But when you're really connected to the Holy Spirit, um, when you really are living in your faith, sin is not, it's not as easy to sin as it used to be. And, you know, um, I listened to this sermon the other day and he was saying, you just can't sin the same. And it's true. You know, once you, as you, you start to grow in your spirituality, um, it's not as easy to sin anymore more as it was before and certain things um, that used to be harder for you um, temptations that used to confront you get easier to resist um, so you know if it seems hard right now for you just hold firm stand firm in your faith and know that it will get easier um, every day it will get easier every day you will feel God come closer and closer to you as you come closer to God and when you have his presence in your life you will feel that peace you will feel that joy you will feel that protection and when you feel like that is slipping just know that you need to call on God to come close to me and I do it daily I'm like God come close to me hold me close Lord um, because I need you to be undisturbed by the world around me I mean even something as simple as God help me be tempted help me not to be tempted when i go to the grocery store to buy things that i don't need something as simple as that see people always think that it has to be something huge like god don't keep me from being tempted to do drugs or keep me from being tempted to watch porn um but it doesn't have to be that that deep. Sometimes it can be something as simple. It's in the little things sometimes. You know, help me to keep from laying on my horn when somebody cuts me off in traffic. You know, something as simple as that. Um, so we just need to really call God closer to us and draw closer to God in all the situations, you know, seek him in, in, in those things and live like Jesus is coming in the next second. So, you know, right now in this very moment, just think over your life. What do you need to let go of? What do you need to ask for forgiveness for? What do you need to thank God for his grace for? And, and do it right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till this evening. Don't wait till later. You know, do it right now. Even if you're at work and you're like, I don't know what to do. Go in the back bathroom, sit on the toilet, bow your head. If you don't feel comfortable doing it at your desk at work, go in the bathroom, bow your head, go in your car, um, you know, and, and do what you need to do be, for your salvation. Don't let, you know, the fear of what other people think or do keep you from your salvation. So that's my interpretation of Mark chapter 13. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.